Police say they are still looking for more suspects. But with me now is the communications chair of the uh, Minneapolis NAACP. She is Raisha Williams. Uh, Ms. Williams, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us, Brooke. I just have to give it up for Raisha Williams. Black girl, you rock. For those of you that don't know who Ms. Rachel Williams is, she's the communication chair of the Minneapolis NAACP. And she had an online interview with a CNN host, Brooke Baldwin, where, you know, Williams was asked to react to the breaking news that two men had been arrested in connection to the shootings that it injured at least five people who were protesting the killing of Jamar Clark there in Minneapolis. So what I'm hearing now, not just one arrest here, uh, but two Tell me, is that what you're hearing? And what do you know about these uh, individuals who are in custody? Right. So we're hearing two at this time, but we don't necessarily trust that. We know that the police department is behind this. This is our personal belief after uh, receiving witnesses' accounts. I just loved how honest she was. I love how candid she was. I loved how secure in her facts she was. She just stood proud. And I'm so glad that... For once, it almost looked like the revolution was not going to be televised. In CNN, National Network, she actually will go ahead and put out the truth. We believe the police department is facilitating the uh, injustice uh, at uh bullying to the protesters, and we also believe that they are involved in this shooting. We know from blackboards and from uh, chat rooms and also videos that we have posted on our website that police um, that are from different counties, police from different districts have come down to entice the protesters, have come down to a bully those the protesters. Those are, I understand you are there in Minneapolis and you know much more about this, but those are serious allegations you are just laying down on national yep. television and we are standing behind it we do not back down from these allegations they're standing by it and, and and despite even trying to be corrected and despite even trying to be to make sure or to see if she wanted to change her statement or waiver and in the way that she felt in her beliefs nope not a bit bob crow where is your he- evidence that, that they were involved in the shooting So we know that when the incident happened, police were lurking over the top of the precinct. Immediately once the victims were shot, protesters ran to the door of the precinct and they knocked on the door for help for ambulance. The police came out and one officer said, this is what you've been wanting and shut the door on us. It took 15 minutes for the police to even arrive. And shortly after that, they began to mace the crowd. So if you are not a part of the problem, if this is not something that you're trying to cover up, why would you not attend to victims that pay for your salary? We know your games. We know what you're doing. And we know who's working hand in hand. And that seems to be the white supremacists and the police department there in Minneapolis. And not just Minneapolis. It's happening, you know, around different parts of rural and urban America. It's happening everywhere. Um, We're even seeing that from different protests. It may not have been as peaceful as the ones that's happening in Minneapolis. There haven't been not one, you know, looting not one rioting, not one thing set a fire. So it has been actual peaceful protesting. What shocked me the most, you know, when they actually went to get some help, they were protesting right there in front of the police department. When they went to get the help, you know, what they were told. But do you have concrete evidence? I understand what you're telling me you heard when the door was open at the police precinct, but but what is your concrete evidence of this? We have concrete evidence. We have video footage, go to our website, of an uh, undercover cop getting into an unmarked car. We have the license plate. We've been running it. They have been coming down to our facility, to the precinct, where we have our city tent and our protesters, and they have been trying to entice us the whole time. So we believe and we stand behind our belief that the Minneapolis Police Department are not protecting us. And therefore, they stand with racist white supremacists who want to, to destroy a peaceful movement all over the country. When things like this have happened, riots have broken out in Minneapolis. We have not rioted. We have not burnt anything. We have not looted. Even after we have been shot at and injured by white supremacists and the police did nothing but come on the scene and begin to mace our protesters, we still have not taken the streets angry. We're a peaceful group of all nationality, all religions, and all different points of views. But we all come together to stand in one righteous truth. Want justice for Jamar. I understand. We're going to wait for concrete evidence. We're going to wait for this police press conference from Minneapolis. Uh, Raisha Williams, thank you so much for your time from the NAACP. So it just goes, you know, to beg the question, you know, so if you're not a part of the problem, 
if this is not something you're trying to cover up, why would you not attend to the victims who pay for your salaries? I mean, now that's just blunt and also very real, a very real question that I'd like to get answered. If you say the police are here to protect and to serve, who did you protect and who did you serve that night when <laughs> the people that got shot had to wait almost 15 minutes for any kind of police help, for any kind of help, for any kind of aid being rendered. And then when the police got there, it just became another enticing, agonizing event. And instead of trying to render aid and protect and serve the people, they turned on the people and maced them. <laughs>